Morning. Kindergartners, we are going to make our picture now for O, for all of our octopus. And remember, ah. So with this one, remember, an octopus is kind of like camouflage. So there are lots of different colors you could choose for your octopus. I'm going to use like a brown and a kind of reddish purple color for my octopus colors. And then I have a color for my border and a color for my background. I'm going to go ahead and get started. All right, friends, I found my light, which means it might be a little easier to see, but it also means there are going to be funny shadows, but we'll just work around them. So a lot of people like to use blue as the background for their octopus because blue, you know, is kind of ocean colored. I'm going to use it here for my border um, and then use sort of an orange color for my background later. But of course, any color for your border and any color for your background will be fine. So with the octopus, we might put a little bit of a smiley face on it, but what you have to remember is that an octopus really, it does not have like a mouth to have a smiley face. Instead, on the bottom of the octopus head, remember we said it has that beak spot where it's got the one hard part of its body. So we're going to put sort of a smiley face on it just so that it looks like something. But even though we do that, remember that's not, you know, we're not drawing a science drawing of an octopus. We're just drawing a story of an octopus for, for our pompous print story. So I'm going to finish this around here. Now you remember an O begins with a C and we call it magic C because it can make so many other letters. O is the one that we're coloring today. And uh, next week we're going to start talking about G, which is another letter that we make by starting with a magic C. So um, when you do this, remember we're gonna start in the middle, right? All magic Cs, they start in the middle. But then just like every other C does, we're gonna be curving back toward the smiley face side. So even though we start in the middle, we need to remember, of course, where do you start your letters? At the top. Where do you start your letters? At the top. If you're going to start a letter, then you better, better, better remember to start at the top. So, of course, O is going to start at the top. And it's a start in the middle. But then remember, take a moment, look at your paper. Where's the smiley face side? It's over here, right? So when we start in the middle, our O, our magic C, the beginning part of that O, the big curve to bottom, that is gonna start out going toward the smiley face side. The reason for that is that's the direction that we write words and letters. It's gonna finish us up around on the other side ready for the next letter. So that can be a little confusing. And it's not a rule that matters so much that if you don't do it that way, nobody's gonna understand what you mean. But it's going to start sticking some patterns in your brain that will make some other things later on, especially cursive. You guys have probably seen the fancy loopy writing that a lot of grown-ups use. Well, that's called cursive, and you start that in third grade. And some of the handwriting rules we teach you now, like the direction to make an O, those things are mostly useful because then when you get to third grade and you're learning cursive, that fancy grown-up writing, your hand is ready for it. It's already used to drawing an O in that direction. All right, here's my border. Like always, I'm going to sit back and check it. This part here looks like it's a little thin to me compared to the other parts of my border. So I'm going to build it up and add on a little bit more to it. And same thing up here. Sorry, this extra camera of mine is awfully handy, but it's a little wobbly sometimes. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and use this purplish red color and I'm going to start not at the top, but toward the top. I don't need room for a head on top of Oliver because, right, his head is the round part. So I'm going to start here and get ready for my big curve to bottom. Like so. And then once I get to the bottom, I'm going to check my curve. And then think again about my big curve to top. Now, often I like to make my capital letters so that they're really nice and big and take up most of the page. 
that you guys know. An octopus has eight arm leg type things sticking out of it, right? So we're going to need some space for those arms and legs to go. So let's see, I'm getting my big curve evened out over here. Looks like maybe it leads a little more right there. All right. And a little more here. Okay. Now I've got my big curve to bottom and I'm going to take it back up around to the top. And I'm not going to hurry too much because my eyes, they're going to kind of hone right in here where I'm coloring. And then my eyes are going to sort of sit back a little bit and look at the whole thing all at once. So we know that's what artists do. They, they look at a detail spot and then their eyes kind of flick back and look at the whole thing all at once. So we're going to keep doing that. We're going to look in where we're coloring right now. And then we're going to let our eyes kind of pause for a minute and look at the whole picture. So I've just about got my big curve here going to the top and I think I'm going to have a little bit flat spot and a spot that's too fat, but that's all right, right? We're just doing our best and we know mistakes are still fabulous. Our brain learns a lot with mistakes just as much as it does when we get everything just right. As long as we're still thinking and working on learning. So, all right, I like the outside of my big curve here. I don't love the inside of it, but that's all right. All right, so now usually the next thing that we would do would be to fill in the middle. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. But even though I said an octopus doesn't really have a face on it, I'm going to put in here a little eye on this side and a little eye on this side. See, I do kind of like a a little bowl and then a little upside down bowl here. I'm not going to have a really obvious face. It's just going to be a little bit of a face. And of course, an octopus doesn't have a mouth up here, but sometimes it's just nice to have a little bit of a smiling face. And remember, Oliver, he learned to be a good friend and braver. So we're going to give him a little bit of a smiley face. And then I'm going to use this brown because remember, an octopus is a little bit camouflaged, so I'm gonna give. I'm gonna, you know, of course it's me. I'm gonna mix my colors. You don't have to do that, but I'm gonna put some brown here in the background, and then I'm gonna get this same color that I used to make the O, and I'm gonna add that in some too. And then that seems to me like a color that maybe on a coral reef he might be able to stretch out some and seem a little bit camouflaged. In fact, there are some types of octopus that are able to just completely change their colors. There's one that's so cool looking. It's got blue rings on it and it's super poisonous, but I don't plan to ever grab one and try to hug it and make it feel like it's got to protect itself against me. But every now and then it will flash these blue, bright, bright blue rings and it's so pretty looking. I think I might be a little scared if I were swimming along and I actually saw one because I would know it's a really poisonous kind and I would need to back away so it wouldn't be scared of me and hurt me. Um, but boy, there are so many different kinds of octopus with all sorts of pretty colors and they can change their color as they're swimming around. Maybe sometime you can talk to your parents and ask them if they can Google some of those pictures for you. All right, so here's my Oliver octopus. All right, now I need to think about his arms and legs, right? And you know, he's got eight. So what I'm gonna do is just start putting some little things out like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, you know, an actual octopus leg, it can be wide and it can be kind of wavy, right? So now that I know I've got eight spots here, I'm going to get my octopus legs a little, uh, bigger and wider and a little more flowy. So I'm actually going to make some of them look like they kind of curve around some here, you know, because an octopus is in water. 
So here's going to be one that's kind of going off this direction, like so. And you know, they, they can be really long too. So I'm actually not going to end any of my octopus legs. I'm going to just let them all go completely off the side of my picture. Do you see that? And then I'm going to take this one here. I'll have this one go down off this bottom edge too. And I'm going to make it a little bigger because, you know, an octopus is really strong. And they can be really smart. We were at an aquarium once, like a zoo for, um, for animals. And they had an octopus in there that when they gave it treats, they actually put it inside a jar with a screw on lid. And the octopus would smell the treat inside the jar. And then he would use his arms and legs and wrap them around the jar. And he figured out how to unscrew the lids on those jars to get his treat out. And they said sometimes too, they had um, different sections of the aquarium for him to be in. And if they stuck the treat in a different section of the aquarium, he would find the tiny little cracks and crevices, because remember, as long as it's wide enough for his beak, he can get through. He would find those tiny little cracks and crevices, and he would slip over to the other section wherever he might find his little treats in those jars. So an octopus can be pretty smart. They can smell really well through the water and they're really, really strong. All right, there's one, two, three, four legs finished. And now I have four more to go. I'm gonna have this one just kind of go off right over here. There's my number five. Now this one, I have a little more room, so I'm gonna have this one kind of curl around some like some of the ones did at the bottom. I love watching an octopus at the aquarium. The way they move around in the water, kind of like they're floating and flying and dancing all at once. They're just amazing creatures. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, and here's seven, eight for me. So I'm gonna work on this one and kind of put it out this way. Now, of course, I hope you guys noticed, your legs do not have to be where my legs and arms are. Yours can be anywhere around on the octopus. Just try to make sure there are eight of them because an octopus, you know, it's named for um, Greek words and in Greek, octo means eight. So when you talk about an octagon, that's because it has eight sides just like an octopus has eight legs. If you've ever seen a stop sign, you've seen an octagon. It's a shape with eight sides, just like our Mr. Friend Oliver Octopus here has eight legs. All right, there I have them. I'm gonna count one more time and make sure. One, two, whoops, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are my eight. Now I'm going to do my background. And you know, usually I have to flip all around with my background and I do a little small section and then I go to some big sections. But now with my octopus legs here, it's all kind of separated into small sections, isn't it? So that's going to be handy for me doing my background. I've got that one section done be between a couple of legs and now I'm going to work on another one here. Although, you know, my brain still wants something kind of new and novel. Novel can be another word for new. It means something unusual that that's all new that you haven't really done before. So I think the novel thing I'm going to give my brain to do is to switch from coloring sections up at the top and color a couple of sections down at the bottom. So there I have those two sections colored in and now I'll switch to some, I think I'll do this one. This one's pretty big right here. 
I'm going to start out here down by this first leg that I did. So you guys have probably heard the word limb before. You know, we often use limb to mean like a branch of a tree, but we can use limbs for people and for animals too. It means our arms and legs. And limb is an awfully handy word to use with an octopus because it's not really an arm or a leg, is it? They have these eight parts sticking out. And another thing you guys might already know, on the bottom of an arm or leg, a limb of an octopus, it has lots of little suction cups. That's how it's able to move around. It can stretch out one of its limbs and use the little suction cups on it to stick on to something that it finds and then pull itself toward that. Although if you ever watch a video of them swimming, you'll see they just have all sorts of amazing ripply ways to move. They can use their muscles all sorts of different directions. All right, now I have two on the top and two on the bottom. I'm gonna maybe go to this side one over here. This kind of long skinny one between these two legs. Now, I hope once you guys make these at home, when you come back to school, you look up at the, the list of letters up above the whiteboard, because then you'll be able to see three of them. You'll see the one the way I did it, and you'll see the one the way you did it, and you'll see another one the way I did it up on top of the whiteboard, and you'll see mine aren't the same every time. Even though I kind of go with the same directions and I plan to follow the same thing, it turns out a little differently. That's how art kind of works. Things are different each time and that's okay. The way we feel one day might make it a little different from another day. The other things we're thinking about, all sorts of things can change the way our art turns out, but that's all right. We can still see the O on here, right? Now, if you haven't paused yet, to look at your whole picture, do pause and make sure the O is there. If you've got your letter on there, that's what you need. That's the main thing. Everything else is just kind of extra. So I have got now, oh, I have a white spot here. I'm gonna get that colored in. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven sections. And I just have this one more up here to do. It almost looks like a sunshine to me, especially because I'm using this kind of orangey sunshine color. You might notice some different things. If you are using green for your background, maybe in some places you notice some things that look a little bit like a bush or some grass or a tree. All sorts of different shapes we can find within our shapes. All right, I'm almost done here. And I wanna make sure when I finish, even though I know I'm getting close to the end, I don't wanna just start scribbling because I'm right at the end so I can finish quick. I'm gonna make sure that I work steadily and do my best work all the way through. And there it is. Here is my Oliver Octopus. I will see you guys on Monday.